welcome to another video. Today I'm going to share with you my top five colored pencil tips for beginner colorists. This is going to be part of the series that I've been doing for quite a while here on my channel, Adult Coloring for Beginners. I will make sure that I have that playlist linked in the upper right hand corner because there are a lot of really great videos in that series. I have quite a few tutorials and just lots of different information for beginner colorists. I've noticed very recently that there are a lot of new subscribers who are beginners commenting in the comments below my videos. A lot of my older videos from that series have been being pulled up quite a lot recently and a lot of you are leaving comments who are new to my channel and just starting to pick up this wonderful hobby of adult coloring. So I wanted to be able to bring this video to you today and share all of my top five colored pencil tips. If you enjoy videos like this and you want to continue seeing my content, please do make sure you subscribe to my channel. If you check the description box below, you will find a link down there to my Facebook group as well as to my email list and also a link down there for my Patreon if you would like to support me over there. My number one top tip for colored pencils would be to have a good pencil sharpener. Most of you know that have been watching my videos for quite some time know that my favorite pencil sharpener is the Doll 133. Now, for a very long time, I had issues with my Prismacolors breaking like we all do. Prismacolors are my go-to pencil. They are my absolute favorite. And no matter what other pencil set I've tried, I always go back to my Prismacolors. They're the pencil that I'm most familiar with, and they just blend like a dream. I'm very familiar with them. I know the colors. I have my own color combinations that I could just pull right out of my head. So I always end up going back to my Prismacolors. But I was so frustrated for a while there because I was having a lot of breakage issues. The pencil sharpener that I used to use that has been suggested all over coloring groups in the coloring community everywhere was this Teagall pencil sharpener. And I used it for quite some time and my pencils just kept breaking. And I thought it was the pencils and turns out it really was not the pencils. I realized after a while that because I was using a handheld sharpener and for some reason with this particular one, I was putting too much pressure this direction with the pencil sharpener and it was pushing into the actual lead of the pencil. So when I would turn the pencil sharpener to sharpen the pencil, it was actually putting pressure on the lead. And so I would pull my pencil out and my pencil would break and it would end up breaking all the way up the core and I would get so, so frustrated and I figured it was time to find a good pencil sharpener that was actually going to sharpen my pencils. And I went through quite a few pencil sharpeners in that experiment time. I actually did a video where I tested a bunch of different pencil sharpeners and I will link that in the upper right hand corner if you are interested in going to view that. I also have a video on how to use the Doll 133 because of course when you receive this in the mail, it does not come with any directions and so a lot of people were coming into my Facebook group and they thought that their pencil sharpener was broken when in fact the pencil sharpener was not broken, they just were not using it correctly. This pencil sharpener is not going to put pressure up on your Prismacolors damaging them. If you pull, push the button and you pull it out and then you push this in again and you put your pencil in, your pencil is securely inside the pencil sharpener. And when you turn the lever, your pencil sharpener is actually still and there's nothing there like your hand, for instance, with the Teagall, that could put the pressure up against the lead of the pencil. So this is the lead that you're gonna get from the Doll 133. Those of you that have watched my videos before, you know that you can actually adjust that back here with this little silver dial. And I'm not gonna get too much into it because I do already have a video on that, but it's really great to have a really sharp lead on your colored pencils. 
on your coloring pages, you will most likely have a lot of little intricate areas or small details, and it makes it much easier with that sharper lead on your pencil to be able to get into those areas with your pencil. I also find that my pencil glides across the coloring page much easier when it's nice and sharp. When you receive your Prisma colors in the mail, this is the tip that is going to come on them. Now it's always a good idea, no matter what pencil set we're talking about, that you sharpen your pencils when you first receive them because you will get the best performance out of your pencils. A lot of the colored pencils that come to you in the mail, especially the budget pencils, they will have a wax protectant film on the tips of the leads. So when you're coloring or even swatching out your colors, with that wax protectant film still on there, you're not going to see the actual performance of the actual pencil. You all that have been following me for quite some time, you know that even before I go and swatch my pencils, I make sure that all of my leads are sharpened with my doll 133. One instance where it is okay to have a tip that is not necessarily so sharp is when you are burnishing your colored pencils together. This one is one that I was using. I just finished a project and I had a color skin and this is my light peach and I was using it to burnish all of my colors together on the portrait that I was coloring. So this is why it looks like this. It worked just fine because I was coloring over a very large area just trying to burnish all of my colors together. For those of you that don't know what burnishing is, it is the final step in your coloring where you just sort of bring all of the colors together and blend them to get rid of all of the white of the paper. My number two tip is to hold your pencils correctly so that you are not being too heavy handed on your paper. So. I just grabbed this sheet. This is my Spring Hill paper. You all know that I love this paper so much and I use it for almost every single PDF or coloring page that I print out. But this is from a tutorial that I did on my previous video and I already have these two circles here. So I'm gonna use this just to demonstrate. But when you're holding your pencil, you want to hold your pencil further back like this and then color just like this, applying light layers, layer after layer, onto your paper. And as you are coloring and laying down your layers, you want to just turn your pencil, and this will help you to keep a sharp lead on your pencil and keep the lead very even as well. This will help to alleviate having to continually sharpen your pencil. The more that you continue to do this and go back and forth, it will give you the ability to continue to lay layers down on the paper. Now this Spring Hill paper is pretty toothy. When you're using colored pencils, you want to make sure you're using paper that does have tooth. Now you wanna make sure that you get all of the layers that you want down on the paper. You could even come back with another color hold the pencil in the same place, further back on the pencil, and blend another color into these two. And as you can see, it's just laying several light layers and the colors are blending together very nicely. And you'll just continue to keep turning your pencil as you lay down the colors. And you just keep coming back one after the other until you have all the colors and enough layers down on the paper. And then after you have done that, and you've gotten all of your very light layers down on the paper, and the colors are all laid in the places that you want them, then you can come back and you can burnish all of those colors together. Most of you know that have been watching me for quite some time know that I do use the burnishing technique a lot and I don't necessarily depend upon solvents or anything like that to blend my colored pencils together. I want my colored pencils to be able to just blend themselves with ease. And I like applying the layers, the light layers over light layers over light layers until all of the colors come together all on their own. And then I'll come back for the final step 
and I will burnish all of those colors together. And this is when you can move your fingertips closer to the lead of your pencil, creating more pressure on the lead of your pencil. And then you can just go in a circular motion and you can use harder pressure and blend all of the colors together. The reason you don't want to do this and apply hard pressure in the beginning as you're laying your layers down because what you're doing is you are damaging the tooth of the paper and you want that tooth of the paper to be there so that you can apply more and more layers and it's always best to go slow when you're coloring because you may change your mind. Say I lay one color in one area on the coloring page. Say I laid this apple green over here on the outside and my chartreuse all over this area, but I decided that I wanted to come back and I wanted to lay more apple green in another area in this circle. If I had already come through and damaged all the tooth of the paper and I was too heavy handed, I would not be able to come back and add more layers to that circle. So it's very important that you learn how to hold your pencil correctly, always holding it sideways and turning it as you go, just like I just demonstrated. And then come back for the very last step and burnish all the colors together. Before coming back and using your white or your blender pencil or whatever you want to use to come back and burnish your colors together or even the lightest color, there are several different ways that you can burnish and I actually have a video on that. I believe if I could find it, I'll link it in the upper right hand corner. But there are several different ways that you could burnish your colored pencils together. One being like I just showed you with the white pencil. But once you come back and you do that step, you wanna make sure that you're doing it at the right time and you're all done with whatever it is you're coloring on your coloring page because you will no longer have any tooth left on the paper to be able to come back and apply more layers once you have done that step. My number three tip for colored pencils is to always make sure you swatch out your colors. This is my colored pencil swatch chart that I created for the set of 120 squared Brute Fooner colored pencils. It is available in my Facebook group in the file section and it has a place for the numbers as well as the names of the pencils. I also did a video where I put all of these into perfect color family order. And so you can print out your swatch sheet and follow that video. I'll make sure that's linked up in the upper right hand corner. Always have a swatch sheet. When you lay out your colored pencils onto your swatch chart and you swatch them all out, I like to make sure that I have three different values of color for each color. I wanna see what my color is gonna look like at the darkest, at the medium value and then at the lightest. Doing it this way is also gonna help you and guide you to pick your color combinations for any of your coloring pages or anything that you're coloring. You can see the colors all right up next to one another. As you can see with this one, I have 120 colors. So I've got some of my colors on this side and then the other colors on this side. And it makes it very easy for me when I could just put them in this protective cover and be able to just flip them back and forth and still be able to see all of the colors. I don't necessarily need a chart that lays all the 120 colors all out on one side because I like to have a lot of space on my color charts. And so that is why I created this one. And I really love how this one turned out. So if you're interested in getting this chart for yourself, you can join my Facebook group and it is available to you for free in the file section. This is a great swatch chart also for your Prismacolors or any set that has a name and a number. If you're someone who likes to print a lot of pages from PDF and you're buying your coloring books digitally, or you're taking your coloring books and you're actually copying the pages from the coloring books onto paper, try to make sure that you're consistent with the paper that you're swatching out on. Because some of the papers are different. Some will be a little more white, some will be a little less white and you want your colors to appear exactly as they're going to appear on your coloring page. 
That leads me to my fourth tip for colored pencils, and that would be to make sure that you match up your paper to your pencils. Not every single colored pencil set is going to work the same on one paper as it does with another. And this goes for coloring books too. I have coloring books that I prefer using my Prisma colors in, and I have coloring books that I prefer using my more budget-friendly pencils in, such as my 120 square Brute Funer pencils. And it is very important that you match up one supply to the other because you will get much better results. Now let's talk a little bit about paper. The papers that I always suggest, and I know it's been coming up a lot in my Facebook group very recently because I do use the Spring Hill paper, but I use two different Spring Hill papers. And I'm going to explain to you exactly why. I'm also going to give you some suggestions and explain the paper a little bit to you so that you can decide which paper you feel may be best for you. This is the Nina Exact Vellum Bristol 67 pound paper, and I love this paper. It works very well with most of your colored pencils. I actually have a video where I tested out different papers on colored pencils, and I'll link that in the upper right hand corner. And then I have the Spring Hill paper, and I have two different variations here of the Spring Hill paper. This one here is the 80 pound paper, and this one here is the 67 pound paper. They are both vellum Bristol, and they both have a good amount of tooth. This is the 80 pound paper, and this is the 67 pound paper. I pulled a sheet out from each uh, ream of paper. So this one, if I'm feeling them one right up against another, of course the 80 pound paper is going to be heavier. So this is going to be your heavier paper and this one is going to be a little bit less heavy. Not much, but it is a thinner paper. Now as far as tooth, if I'm feeling both of these, this one does have quite a bit more tooth as it is thicker. This one, since it's a thinner paper and it is a lighter weight, it does have less tooth on it. You have to ask yourself when deciding which paper is best for you, are you someone who likes to lay the layers down and blend and blend and blend and be able to get lots of layers down with lots of detail? If that is the case and you wanna do all of that before you come in and you do your final step of burnishing, then I would go with the 80 pound paper. If you are someone that wants to lay your colors down on your paper and you don't want to spend as much time trying to lay all of your layers down and do all of that and you want to just not have as much tooth to fill on the paper and be able to get rid of the white of the paper quicker, then I would go with the 67 pound paper. Now you should also check your printer and make sure with the specifications on your printer what type of paper your printer can handle because even some colorists I know do use papers that are 110 pounds and I believe that the Spring Hill also comes in a 110 pound paper as well which would be much more thicker and most likely have even more tooth. So when you're deciding what paper you want to use make sure that it's also going to go through your printer. I have an HP I believe it's an 8020 or an 8030. I'll have to look it up and I'll link my printer down in the description box below. But I was extremely surprised a couple weeks ago when I had to do my Neocolor video and so I wanted to be able to print out some watercolor paper. And I actually was able to get very thick watercolor paper through my printer. So I've got a really great printer and I'm not sure what the specifications say because I did not go back and check the specifications. I just thought, well, let me try it. If it jams, I'll unjam it. <laughs> so I did it and uh, it actually took the watercolor paper without an issue at all. I was amazed. So both of these papers are going to work very well with any of your colored pencils, whether you're using budget-friendly colored pencils or artist-grade colored pencils. You should be able to use both of these papers without a problem with both of those, even whether you're using an oil-based pencil like a polychromos pencil 
or a wax-based pencil. Now that's not to say that if you have a smoother paper, your colored pencils are not going to perform fine because they generally will. And we're gonna get to that because there are some coloring books that actually have a smoother paper. And one of those coloring books I've been using a lot in a series I've been doing here on my channel that is my adult tips and tricks on how to improve your coloring series. And if you've not seen that, I'll try to make sure that's linked in the upper right hand corner because that's a fantastic series if you're looking to improve your coloring skills. The Nina Paper and the Spring Hill 67 pound, they are both the same weight paper. So I just want to explain to you a little bit of the differences. Now, this is the Nina Paper, and this here is the Spring Hill Paper 67 pound. And I would say that the Spring Hill Paper actually feels a little bit thicker in the 67 pound than the Nina Paper does. The other difference, if I put these right up against one another, I can tell that the Spring Hill paper is a much brighter white, much, much brighter white. There is a quite a bit of difference in the coloring of these two papers. And that is another reason why it is very important once you choose what paper you want to be able to print your coloring pages out on that you also swatch your pencils on the same paper because you will see probably not much of a difference but it's going to make a difference in how the color appears on the pages just as if you went and grabbed the paper that you all see me use quite a lot as well, the Strathmore Toned Tan Paper. If I were to color on that paper, my colors look very different than it would if I were to color on white paper. So it makes a little bit of a difference when you've got a variance in your whites, but not that much. But if you care about that, then that is important to note. When you are considering coloring books, you also have to consider the paper that is inside the coloring books because of course you're gonna be coloring on it and you want a nice experience when you're coloring inside your coloring books. You don't wanna be frustrated. So it's very important to match your pencils up to the coloring books that you're coloring in. So here I have an Amazon book. This is printed on the Amazon paper and this is Dragon Life. This is one of Deborah Muller's brand new releases. And it's very cute. If you love dragons and you love fairies, you will really like this book. I'll be showing this book in a future video, but I just wanted to use it for the sake of this video today, just to be able to show you the paper. But the paper in these books, I've colored in these books for years and it's just fine. And you could still cover all of the white. My Prismacolors work beautifully in these books. Last year in July, we did a Hannah Lynn color along here on my channel. Um, it was a Christmas in July color along and I colored on the paper in these books and it turned out beautiful. In my Facebook group very recently, there's been a lot of discussion about these Amazon books and the paper that the books are actually printed on. I find no problem with the paper in these books. And if you want, instead of coloring on this paper, because you may think that it is too thin, it is thinner paper, but I mean, I've even used marker on this paper. I've used my alcohol markers as long as I put something in the back and I have gone over it with colored pencil and I've not had an issue with the paper in any of these books, but with my Amazon uh, printed books, I love to use my Prisma colors because they tend to work very, very well in these books. The other set of pencils that I found works very well in the Amazon printed books is my Caran d'Ache Pablo pencils. Now, here is Flora by Maria Trolle. I, I don't know if her name is Maria Troll or Maria Trolle. If you know, please tell me in the comments below because I've watched several different YouTube videos and a lot of people say Maria Troll and then others say Maria Trolle. So I'm really not sure how to pronounce her last name at this point because I've heard it so many different ways. I love these books just for the paper. Now the paper is a bit thicker. I would say it is probably comparable to maybe 80 pound paper. Don't quote me on that because I'm really not sure, but it feels very similar to the 80 pound Spring Hill paper and it does have quite a bit of tooth. And I have done some really 
beautiful coloring pages in this book. If you have been watching some of my tutorials, you will notice that a lot of my tutorials, I use the Maria Trolle books a lot because of the paper. I was even able to make a tutorial for y'all showing you light source and shading and highlights and where to lay everything on the coloring page. I was able to create a lot of texture in that video because the paper is so wonderful. And I will link that video in the upper right hand corner if you are interested in watching that video. But I have done tons of tutorials in these books on my channel. The paper is not a white, white, white paper. This paper is comparable to some of the paper that you will find in some of the Joanna Basford books where it has more of a, I don't know, I would say kind of manila look, not completely manila, but it's closer to that than being a bright white. And then we have Romantic Country by Erie. I absolutely love these books. I love these books for the artwork that is inside of them. They are just absolutely beautiful. The artist has drawn all of this out with a toothpick. And I love that the artwork is all sort of gray because it gives you an opportunity to sort of cover all of those lines when you're coloring and it really just intensifies what your page looks like after all the color is on the page and your page is completed because all of the lines on your page just completely disappear with your colored pencils. And I really love that about these books. The paper in these books have a little bit of tooth, but not much at all. It is a smoother paper, and I have found that the one pencil that works really well in these books is my Polychromos. I was doing a tutorial for y'all where I was doing something with oil-based pencils, and I pulled out my Polychromos and I had not colored with polychromos yet in this book and the way that the polychromos went down on this paper was truly amazing. But I also use my Prismacolors in this book. I've used my Black Widows in this book. Lots of different pencils will still work beautifully in these books. Whether the paper is smoother or it has more tooth, it all depends on you as a colorist. And even if the paper is smoother, you can make it work, you could change up your techniques, and you can create beautiful coloring pages. My fifth and final tip for colorists when using colored pencils is to take time to practice your coloring skills. Watching tutorials is wonderful, and I have a whole slew of tutorials here on my YouTube channel. Of course, most of you know that my channel is primarily tutorials and reviews and tips and tricks and different things like that. So I have tons and tons of tutorials here on my channel and watching tutorials is wonderful and it will help you increase your coloring skills. But if you don't take the time out a little bit each day, even if it's 30 minutes in your day, to sit and just practice those skills, it is going to be very difficult for you to increase your skills and become better at what you're doing. If you ask any artist, they will always tell you that they set aside time every single day to just practice their techniques and their art and what they're learning or what they're trying to get better at. I want to just go over some of the things that you can do to practice and improve your coloring skills. Now, one of the things that you can do is you can get out your swatch chart of any of your colored pencil sets and a scratch sheet of paper, just a piece of your Spring Hill or your Nina paper or whatever you may have, and a color combination worksheet. This color combination worksheet is available in my Facebook group as well in the file section. You will find it there. I used this one, I think, when I was doing a video and showing you some color combinations or putting together some colors for a color along that we were gonna be doing. So you can just lay your colors down 
on the color combination chart and see how they look together and then it has a space for the name of each color and it gives you enough space to be able to put seven different colors for each block. So this is a great tool that you could reference later if you wanna keep track of what you're doing on any one coloring page. Say a whole bunch of time has gone by and you have this coloring page and you shared it in a Facebook group and somebody asked you, what did you use for the flower on that coloring page? You would always have your um, color combination worksheet to go back and see exactly what you did. You can put the object that you colored on the page right up here where it says object. So that is available to you for free if you want to go um, download that from my Facebook group. A color combination worksheet is so important to have because you could actually use this just to practice some of your color combinations. You could print out tons of copies of this and just keep this just for color combinations so that you can use them for the future when you're trying to come up for come up with a color combination for any one object on your page. You can even use this sheet to label it flowers or something and then put a whole bunch of combinations that you have found that you absolutely love for flowers. Now, when you're color, coming up with your colored combinations and you want to sit down and you just want to practice putting a bunch together, it's really good just to get familiar with creating color combinations because it is the one most important thing when you're using colored pencils. I have plenty of videos on that if you just go search my channel. But you can just take your colored pencil swatch chart, and this is why it's so important to have your swatch chart, because you can go back and see the colors all laid out, so you can sort of decide what you wanna use for your highlight color and your midtone, and then your shading color. And I always recommend for beginners that you start out with just three colors, and as you get a little bit more experience, you can build upon that and start adding more colors, four, four colors, five colors, six colors, to really put a lot more detail into your coloring pages. I have a few coloring pages printed out here and I've shown them in and out of the video and I know a lot of you are gonna ask me where these images came from, but this one here is from a brand new release from Coloring Book Cafe. This is their beautiful Bird Houses book and I love this book. It's got some really beautiful artwork in it, and I want to share with you something that I have discovered very, very recently because this is fabulous for beginners. If you look at the image, you can see that there are sort of, let me hold it a little bit closer, but if you look at this image, you can see that there are actually guidelines in all of the artwork. You could look over here at this leaf and you could see that it's got lines here. This will really help you and guide you as to where you want to add texture. If you look at this birdhouse, I would add the texture in all of these areas where the lines were created in the actual artwork. It gives you guidelines on the pages. And look at these flowers. If you've watched some of my videos where I color in World of Flowers and you see me drawing in all of those lines to make my flowers look much more realistic, these Coloring Book Cafe books, they have the lines already in the flowers, making them look a little bit more realistic, but I love it. I absolutely love it. I just discovered that very recently, and so I wanted to be able to share that with all of you. This is another one from the same book, the beautiful birdhouses book by Coloring Book Cafe, and then my printer accidentally printed it twice, so I've got another one over here, but those are all from their brand new coloring book, and it was just released, and when they first released their coloring books, they released them for a very discounted price before the price goes out up on Amazon. So I'll link that in the description box below for you in case you liked that artwork and you want to try that as a beginner. But these here are from um, the Fairy, I think this one's from Fairy Wedding, Deborah Muller's new, newer book, Fairy Wedding. And this one here, I think, is from her brand new garden book. You guys all know that I love Deborah Muller's books. But anyways, yeah, I just recently discovered the Coloring Book Cafe books and I have discovered that I really, really love them and... I will share with you a little bit more in the future how I discovered that. 
because it a lot of it has to do with the big huge project I'm working on right now. It's a really great way to increase your coloring skills is just to print out two or three pages, color something, any one object on the page, look at it for a little while and decide, okay, what is it that I could change? How could I improve upon this? What is it I want to do differently? And then go back to your second page that you printed out and color the same one object. Say you want to learn how to color a bird and you want to bring a whole bunch of tropical colors together. I would go to Google and pull up a reference photo and try to sort of use that photo to guide me. And then, like I said, on these pages, you have the actual lines here that will guide you as well. I would take my colored pencil and I would go in the direction of all of the lines, making sure that I was creating much more of a realistic look on this bird that may not necessarily be so realistic looking. But you can take something that doesn't necessarily look so realistic and turn it into something that looks extremely realistic. And all it takes is a bit of practice. After you have tried that one skill three times, you can just come back and use the camera on your phone, lay all of the pictures next to one another, snap a picture of each bird or whatever it is that you colored, put them all together next to one another, like one, two, and then your third try, and look at the pictures and you can see from the first one to the second one, the improvement that you've made. But I think that's a really good tip so that you can really learn how to improve your coloring skill. But like I said earlier, you need to be able to set that, set that time aside each day to be able to improve your coloring skills. It takes practice. My next recommendation would be to always have two copies, even three copies in some cases, of your coloring books. And right now is a really great time to take advantage of that because Amazon is running a special promotion where if you buy two, you get one for 50% off. And a lot of people are having trouble finding that deal just by going to Amazon and trying to look it up. So I will make sure that that is linked in the uh, description box below if you would like to purchase your coloring books. I don't know if it's still going to be up by the time I get this video out, but as I'm editing, I will check and make sure the promotion is still going before I put the link down in the description box. But I have several copies of my coloring books and I always take advantage of those sales because it's so important for me to always have a copy of or a second copy or even a third copy of my coloring books not just because I use them all for tutorials but because I might want to go back and color that page again or I might want to take one of my coloring books and use that coloring book just to practice in and then I will have the other one for later once I've increased my skills or I may want to take one page in that coloring book and go back to the other coloring book and find the same exact page and just recolor it and then look at the difference in the first time I did that page and the second time I did that page. Even if the first time you colored that page and the current time you colored that page spanned between a year, that is amazing because you can go back and you can look at those pages, put them together, and you will clearly be able to see how far you've come with your coloring skills. That was my top five colored pencil tips for beginner colorists. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. I think that there was a lot of really great information all packed into one video. So I really hope that you get something out of this. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. That helps my channel out a whole lot and it helps my videos to be seen by others that are possibly just beginning their coloring journey. Everything that I've shown you in this video of course, will be linked in the description box below. I will see you all in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.